me take you to this now. Big story. 14 years from now, South Africa looks set to have cleaner energy and low shedding will be a thing of the past. This is according to Electricity Minister Dr. Khonsi and Choramakopa, who presented the Integrated Resource Plan 2025 to drive the electricity plan going forward. Ramakopa says government's latest energy plan envisages a, the production of 105 gigawatts of new generation capacity to the grid. This is two and a half times more than ESCOM's current capacity. Minister of Electricity, Khonsian Ramakopa, joins us now for more. Minister, good evening. Thank you so much for your time. Really do appreciate it. I'm going to jump into the numbers because I think we need to make sense of that first. Over the next five years, you plan to add 29,710 megawatts of new generation to the grid. Most of that uh, will be coming from renewable energy with 3,100 uh, megawatts of storage capacity along with that. What is the uh, uh, what is the cost projection of such an undertaking uh, over the next five years? And I want to put this into perspective. 29,000 megawatts plus of new generation capacity is more than half of ESCOM's current installed capacity. Oh yes, uh, good evening Oliver and thank you very much for, for the invitation. Of course, uh, over the 14-year uh, period uh, from now to 2039, that 105 uh, gigawatts of new generation capacity is going to be approximately 2.2 trillion rands. And you're absolutely correct that uh, we, we, have, uh, we have two horizons. The one horizon is from now until 2030, because I think there's uh, immediate pressure for us uh, to be able to ensure that we support uh, the economic growth, uh, the 3% uh, uh, assumption that uh, underlines uh, the, the energy mix, so it requires that uh, we add, um, I think, approximately uh, 29,000 uh, uh, megawatts uh, in the next uh, in the next four years. Um, of course, uh, it's a uh, it's a fraction of that 2.2 uh, trillion rands. I think uh, uh, approximately it will uh, it will come to to about uh, I think uh, 500 to 600 billion rands of investment. In the next day, uh, in the next uh, four years, so it's it's significant. It's significant from a, a number of uh, perspectives. The first one is that uh, we are pivoting towards a cleaner uh, energy um, uh, sources. So if I, when I speak to you now, uh, if you look at the current installed capacity, coal accounts for uh, 58 percent, 10 percent uh, solar PV, 8 percent wind, 10 uh, percent rooftop solar solutions, and about 3 percent of that is. Uh, is nuclear. But when we get to 2039, uh, you find that coal is going to constitute 27% uh, of the total installed capacity. Of course, from a, a megawatt point of view, um, it's uh, it's about uh, 40 gigawatts. Uh, so it's 27% of a much, much bigger uh, installed capacity. So we are seeing an exponential rise in cleaner sources of energy, uh, and that will be nuclear. You are renewables, uh, principally wind and solar. Um, and then we we also looking at uh, at hydro as uh, some of those solutions that we are introducing in the South yeah. African energy mix. Uh, of course, we also have our eye on the cost of uh, electricity. We can I can I pause you there because I, what I call. Uh, can I pause you there, Minister, because I want us to speak about the cost of electricity separately because that, I think, deserves its own attention outside of that. Um, by 2030, a number of our coal power stations, power plants, will be decommissioned. Uh, and that base load will be replaced by, as you described, 6,000 uh, megawatts of gas to power. We don't currently have gas to, mega, gas to power uh, operations in South Africa, or plants active in South Africa. 2,000 megawatts of that is already out to market. When do you expect closure on that? And what is the specific... Uh, uh, cost base for uh, and replacing that base load uh, with gas to power 6,000 megawatts. And of course, where are we getting those uh, uh, molecules from? Are we getting it from the Orange Basin or importing? Oh, it's an excellent question. Perhaps a, a more technical issue is that uh, we, we don't necessarily speaking of the decommission of the power stations. We're talking about the repurposing because there's a sunk cost there. Uh, the civil works will be there, the balance of plant will be there, access to the grid will be there. So repurposing will take various forms. It could be that uh, you're migrating from uh, coal as uh, your primary energy to uh, a gas as a primary energy, and or you can also introduce uh, solar PV. Uh, and of course, much, much later, we, we are confident that the in the next seven to 10 years, uh, the SMRs will have matured. So there's opportunity for us to use uh, SMRs uh, in, in those uh, 
uh, areas where we are repurposing the power station. So I thought I must just make that point. And then to a very important point uh, is that the, in the, um, the immediate future, we're looking to import LNG. Um, preferably, we want uh, domestic gas. What's the advantage of the most domestic gas is, is that they were able to uh, control or manage the, the price point because there are two risks of um, importing gas from outside. That is the molecules, uh, uh, Oliver. The first one is a, is a commodity, commodity risk because uh, the fluctuation in gas prices exposes you so you are unable to uh, determine a, a predictable, predictable uh, price path for electricity. And then the second one is the currency risk because when you buy on the international market is dollar denominated, so it's a function of uh, the relative strength of uh, our currency to the dollar, and therefore you are you are exposed to those fluctuations. Yeah. So ideally, would want a, a domestic gas, but you know that Minister Mantash is responsible for the upstream resources. Uh, we have been working with a number of majors. Of course, we have been taken to the courts. Uh, we suffered defeats there at the courts, but we'll restart the the process. But in the short term, uh, Oliver. We have two options. The one option, and the quickest one, is to uh, uh, get uh, uh, gas from Mozambique. Of course, it's depleting. So I'm talking about the LNG, put a, a regasification facility on the side of uh, Mozambicans because you can then uh, connect to the Romco pipeline, which is uh, the infrastructure that uh, transports the gas currently, as we speak, from from Mozambique. So there's very little to do. Uh, yeah. from uh, an infrastructure investment point of view other than the regasification facility and just uh, the connector uh, to the Remco pipeline. And the more enduring solution is the Richards Bay one. And you make the, an important point that we are out uh, on the market for two gigawatts of gas to power. I think we are going to land on uh, the importation of uh, that gas uh, and being regasified at the uh, uh, Richards Bay and then you convert that to, to power. Of course, um, we're going to have a big problem in relation to meeting the uh, the, the demands of uh, the gas users that are north of the country because the Lily Pipeline yeah. that transport the gas from uh, Houten to the coastal areas uh, doesn't have the right capacity um, uh, to uh, uh, transport that gas that could be coming from Richards Bay going up. You might have to increase the capacity of that uh, pipeline you might have to secure servitude this is a big big investment yeah and we don't think that even if you do that tomorrow you are going to succeed to uh, get it online by by 2030 so those are the risks that are yeah. confronting us and then an important question no we i i'm not in a position to to fix the price or even make a projection but we have an appreciation of the price point that uh, is going to help us to exploit the uh, a guess to power, uh, but let's allow the market to respond because yeah. I don't want to preempt what the market is. But yes, we, it's an important question that we have to answer, um, uh, 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 Oliver, because it, just, uh, it's also has implication on the cost of electricity. Yeah, I just very quickly and importantly want to speak about uh, nuclear. You promise us 5,200 megawatts uh, of nuclear over the next 14 years with the potential of adding an additional 4,800 through the nuclear industrialization plan. Uh, that is five times the capacity of nuclear we currently have. I mean, Kuba giving us 1,800 and something odd megawatts. And of course, there's only the life extension on uh, unit one of Kuba, 930 megawatts uh, being what is on offer there. Um, we don't have the uh, uranium isotopes. Uh, we don't have the enrichment facilities for the uranium isotopes, albeit we're a uranium rich country. Uh, tell us about what is being done in the value chain to be and ensure that we have the localization of, of that, uh, because we also know that it is a political question when we talk about uh, a geopolitical question when we talk about uh, uranium isotopes. It's quite radioactive, excuse the pun. Uh, how do we manage the sensitivity of that? And of course, we were promised during the Jacob Zuma administration the fifth administration a a, a a a nuclear program that would cost a trillion rand that has been shot down vehemently by the markets and of course by the voters and large uh, and here you say guys you know what we're going to do it five times more than what we had promised you previously uh, that seems quite ambitious too oh yes your observations are spot on maybe let me start here what has changed between the uh, uh, that period when we, we, we made the commitment, as you put it, during the Zuma, President Zuma era to procure nuclear. I think there is two major 
uh, occurrences. The first one is that uh, there's an accepted by uh, the international markets that in the taxonomy of what constitute grain, uh, you have to include the nuclear. And in fact, the COP at the UAE has endorsed that position. So everyone now accepts that the nuclear is green. And then the second one is clean rug and green. And then the second one is that the uh, 14 of the major financing houses globally have committed to uh, make investments in nuclear, including chief amongst those, uh, uh, the World Bank. So the financing uh, fraternity is tilting towards uh, a, a, a bias to funding nuclear. And then the third development, uh, um, uh, Oliver, is that the, the biggest investors on the uh, on nuclear technology now is your data centers, uh, the NVIDIA's, uh, Microsoft, you mentioned them, Google. They are the biggest investors here because we are moving away from pressurized water reactors to high temperature water reactors, high temperature reactors, I'm sorry, which are a bit more agile, uh, faster to construct, and therefore uh, very predictable from a price point of view. They are easily adaptable, they are scalable. Um, uh, so what the point I'm making is that there's a big liquidity globally that is following uh, developments in nuclear. And then the fourth development that has happened, Oliver, is that the, um, uh, 20 of 20 countries, uh, the majority of whom are in the most industrialized countries, have committed to uh, triple their nuclear capacity by 2050. So everything is working in, in our favor. And then you're making yeah. an important point we have an ambition of participating in the full nuclear cycle. Of course, we don't want to do enrichment beyond the 20% because now you are entering dangerous territory. We are signatories to um, the, the nuclear uh, the peace uh, um, uh, usage of, uh, of uh, nuclear for peaceful purposes. We are the yeah. first ones uh, uh, to discontinue our nuclear a, a program for military purposes, so we're highly loaded. So just to be clear, our, en our, enrichments, atomic our enrichments levels are not going to reach that of uh, weapons grade? No, we'll be closely guarded uh, okay. by the International Atomic Energy Association. Yeah. And then we have a facility in Pelindaba as a conclusion on this point, where we have uh, suitors who wants to partner with us. So it's an off-balance sheet uh, investment. Um, and of course, I've appointed a panel uh, that is also going to make sure that the process is transparent, we are competitive uh, in how we go out to, to the market. I mean, there are various yeah. uh, procurement strategies. If you look at other countries, they do a fixed cost uh, contract. Uh, so all they say is that this is what I'm going to pay. These are the megawatts I want. This is the period I want, these sure. uh, megawatts. Uh, and then the risk in between are carried by the vendor. Uh, whoever will be the vendor. So we, yeah. we will design that procurement problem program, but what is important, it must be transparent and competitive. Yeah. Minister, unfortunately, that's all that we have time for this evening. I wanted to speak to you about clean coal still and the vulnerabilities of the skills, capacity, skills base, and industry readiness uh, for this IRP because you've presented an IRP which I think an industry doesn't quite yet exist for. But unfortunately, we're going to have to leave it there now. That is the Minister of Electricity, Honsiencho Ramakupa.